All right, the Reds. Uh, welcome to another Live at Five. Today we are talking about the big match on Saturday, Manchester City v Liverpool. But we're also going to just talk about sort of life being a Red and why that's good and why we feel lucky, if you like, to have grown up as Reds and to support this club. Um, if you're wondering, as I mean, you might look at what I've just said, you might listen to what I've just said and think, oh, they're going to have a big chat about what's going on at Everton then. Well, we've done a whole fucking show about that. So if you want to hear me and Kopi talking about the Everton situation, uh, the late challenge this week will be all about that. Um, so get on that. That will be out there on Wednesday morning. Wednesday, yeah. Uh... Wednesday morning. So look out for that. Um, but no, today we are talking about the Reds. Uh, I want to start by asking as well, because this has worked before, and I don't care. I'm not bothered any spares for Manchester City. <laughs> uh, if you've got a spare ticket for that game and you're looking for a good home for it, come to your Uncle Gareth. Give it to uh, Robbo. I've been on a good little run of getting to the aways this season. I'd like it to continue, uh, but these ones seem to be rare as rock and all shit. You but... need to start it. You need to start like a blag that you're a good omen. I am a good omen. Well, I've already done this because I've been, I've been messaging at anyone and everyone I can think of on this. And um, I was speaking to Craig Hannan, actually. And uh, he said, well, it might not be the worst one to miss. And I was like, oh, mm. fucking bit, bit negative there. And he's like, well, no, but I'm just, you know, I'm looking at our record type, type of thing there. And I said, well, I went to the 4-1. I went to when we beat them 4-1. And I went when we knocked them out the Champions League. I yeah. said, so I'm a good omen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we do all right. And I went to the semi-final when we beat them at Wembley as well. Yeah. So Get I, him a ticket. I Don't think sly. I think if I'm near, I could help the Reds win. <laughs> I'm fucking like I say, I'll try anything to try and get a ticket for this one. So if you've got a spare on the go there and you want to go down for it, you know where I am, give us a shout. Um in terms of uh, all the international board and stuff, then obviously there are still some games to come uh, as we speak. Uh, but the highlights. Fascinating. <laughs> no, yeah. Can't wait. I mean, I watched that England Malta one. Oh my god, I wanted to like Pull me Did you watch out. the whole game? No. I just sort of like, I put it on thinking, I'll watch this then. And then I settled down and it was crap straight away and it was boring and I was just like, oh my God, why have I put this on? Thank you, mate. And and then I just started doing that thing where, you know, where you go, oh, I'll start looking at my phone. Even like started reading a bit of a book and it's just, it's just on. Yeah. The telly's on the wall in my house and it's just on. And like, I'll look up if something happened, but very little happened and it was just, it was bad. Even people who were bothered about England w were fuming, saying it was bad. I mean, you know, like if I go in the kitchen, I'll turn the radio on, and I heard Stuart Pearce saying, this is really bad. I put it on for two minutes, and in the two minutes I had it on, there were paper airplanes coming yeah, onto the pitch from the bit. crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they were commentating thought, on it, and they, and they mentioned it, yeah. and I thought, that's how shit this game is. That not only the crowd throwing them onto the pitch, but I think, was it, who was it doing the... Uh, Dion Dublin. Was it Dion Dublin doing the commentary? Yeah. And he commented, on, comment on, he commented on how good the paper airplanes yeah. were <laughs> to get from the crowd to the pitch. I don't you think, fucking hell, lad, this yeah. game must be awful. Yeah, exactly that. Um, someone's saying there, you can quite easily get one in the home end, Robbo, so get the mank accent out. Yeah, that's a nice And I fucking scousers today, oh, innit? Would... Do you think... Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Wear a GoPro or something so we can, we can have it for content. Tell you what, I think we'll have these today, these yeah. fucking scousers. Fucking coming here at twelve thirty. We only moved the kick off because the way they fucking behave, they fucking threw something on our fucking bus. Fucking 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 fuck. something like that. That passed me. Do, do you reckon I get, I, I, do I, I'd get through doing that? Just do it. Um, what else did we have? Well, of course, we've got to mention Big Dom as well. Um, two sublime goals for Hungary. Uh, the first one in particular, just absolutely brilliant. And like, just just genuinely like like mouth water and that isn't it when you see him like that because you're like oh what a player. imagine he could reproduce that at the etihad yeah imagine he just pulls out moments like that did you see the other bit by the way you might this might have passed you by so not only did he score those two goals uh, and i think that that's like guaranteed that the through to the euros isn't it pretty much i think not sure um well either way the fans were happy they love do you know him I mean? don't they yeah they, they love, love him. him he's their hero and one of them Gave him something to drink. Did you the see shot. it? Shot. Yeah, yeah. And it, fucking I, big shot as well. Did I know. You see it? And he he like pulled that face that people who never have a bevy pull when they have a bevy. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, uh. and like I, I seen. I think it was the red men put put a tweet out which made me laugh where it said, um, "Oh no, it's gonna we're gonna have pissed players against Man City <laughs> yeah. again." Remember that when we'd won the league. 
And, oh uh, yeah. yeah, we got battered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like the, you know, like was it Mane like, had to like funny. Mane had to like guide Trent into the lineup at the start. Yeah. Which was funny <laughs> with that. Where they were, we were all like, they just fucked because we've won the league. Yeah. And Klopp afterwards was like, nothing to do with that. That's not. We're professionals. Like, oh fuck off, Jürgen. You'd he just be couldn't you'd say. You'd have been better off saying. Yeah, he couldn't They're say. They're all fucked lads. publicly. Uh, the other thing as well, another little sort of clip that was out there. I don't know if you saw it. Did you see? Um, Van Dijk's tackle in the, in the game against Ireland. No, boss. boss. It was just like the, the, the you know the player's just literally about to pull the trigger, and he comes flying in and takes it off his foot. And it was another one that I think just adds to that narrative of he's back, he's back, yeah, he's yeah. he's the he's the old Virgil again, yeah. uh, which is fantastic to see. And then Mo as well scored four goals, uh, but then in the, in in the second match he played ended up sort of with all security around them and a little bit wild, like people running on the pitch. But when you read more about it, 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 it seemed more like rather than being in danger, like they were reds and like, we're just like, whoa, I'm like, oh, really? I'm on the pitch and they just sort of like lost a little bit and legged on. So I don't think it was sort of as malella, malella I can't say the word. It, it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't as bad. It wasn't, a, wasn't as bad as it looked is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Um, and yeah, there are still games to come. So fingers crossed, we don't get uh, any new injuries. It's looking good touch wood so far for the Reds. Um, I asked the questions on Twitter um, and in the comments who got both. Um, someone's put a uh, uh, J Dubbers has put. Uh, do you think there's an injury diddle going on? Do you reckon most of these will become available on Saturday? That was a, that was only sort of like yesterday that they sent this, and there was a long list of current injuries: Rodri, De Bruyne, Harlan, Stones, Edison, uh, Kovacic, Nunes, Ache. Uh, it's already been confirmed since literally the tweet was sent that. Harlan's injury is not serious. Rodri's played on Sunday as well after his unspecified discomfort uh, for a previous game. So I guess the question now, um, there's obviously a few days to go until this game, but you know, how are we how are you feeling about it? I saw this tweet from Henry Jackson and he said, Much as I'm loving Liverpool this season. I'm really not looking forward to Saturday's game in the slightest. He says, it's just one of those where the timing of it has all the ingredients for a horrible performance, a way to, let's face it, an incredible team. He said, huge shame that it's not on Sunday. What's your thoughts about it right now? Are you How are you feeling about going there 12.30 Saturday? Uh, well, I'm surprised when I saw that from Henry Jackson and you've already mentioned Craig's it's obviously not yeah. not very confident going yeah. into it. Because I've been saying for weeks, I've been looking forward to this game. At, at, at the end of the day, if you're building a new side, we're doing really well, especially, well, we're doing really well full stop, right? But we're doing really well, especially in, in the context of what we expected coming into the season mm -hmm. with the whole Liverpool 2.0 and building a new side and all the rest of it. So we're, like, I want to see us tested against the best team. I want to see what we're like against them. And... It's I, one game as well. Yeah, but... I, I, I think, like, we well, don't need to lose our minds about this particular game. Like, we have got a bit of a poor record there, which we'll come on to talk about in a second. But also, look, if we, if we go there and we lose to them, we've still played well this season and we'll only be four points behind them in the, in the worst in case the scenario. Scheme. Yeah, and I don't think they're as good as they were. I, there is some... And look, this could obviously, touching all the wood, this could come back to bite me, they could batter us and they look amazing and we look shite. But the, for, the, for them to be as doing as well as they are off the back of what they did last season shows how good they are. Anyway, let's let's park the uh, you know doping conversation for a while. But for the and just talk it as a football Financial team. Financial doping. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well in, well in. I'm in enough trouble this week. Just to be, just to be clear, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't want any yeah. more. If visits you want to find out busies. why I'm in enough trouble this week. <laughs> Uh, sign up for our Patreon. You can Good. get a free. You can get a free trial now. So you can Good go. Segue. And, you can go and listen to it. Um, why won't my clock stop? And why won't it clear and start again? Anyway, carry on. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, plod coming to copies. Get on it on the subscription shop. It's worth it. I promise you. Um, it's worth it because it's free. It's like, oh, how can it not be worth it? Go and fucking have a check. Just go and check it out. So yeah, I I want us to play them. I I want it. I want to see us tested against them, and I'm confident we can beat them. Like, I think we are good. Like, look at what other teams, how other teams have caused them problems this Chelsea, season. Yeah. The, Last game. Exactly. We're well better than Chelsea. We've got an unbelievable attack. Our defence, you've just said yourself, Van Dijk the past few games, and clearly for Holland now, same, he's looked back to what he was at his peak almost. And 
I didn't think we were going to get that. I didn't think we were going to get that Van Dyke back. So the only thing that worries me in the whole thing, well, two things worry me. The two things that worried me before the season started, sadly, you know, we, we're, who are we going to play left back? Not that that was the specific thing before the season, but, you know, injuries to defenders, key mm. defenders. Um, and probably going to be, do you think it's probably going to be Simicast just because I, I think there's an argument for Gomez, obviously, in, in terms of, um, you know, his defensive nous and all that kind of thing. And that that's perhaps where Simicast is lacking. But I think when he's not in the side... Um, you know, he's left footed ultimately. Balance and, yeah, changes. The, the balance thing. And, and look, he was, you know, last game he was better and he dug out that cross from Mo and, you know, it's been a reaction from him. I, I don't know. I, I, I sort of think feels a little bit start of a white flag if Gomez is starting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, and look, it depends on injuries and stuff as well, doesn't it? Because Gomez was injured. Yeah. Gomez picked up a knock or was sick. Or what you're so. saying, I think, is right in, in that, you know, look... The record is recent record there is poor, and you know the the last win under Klopp in the league there is is the four one that I mentioned, which is twenty fifteen. Now, you know last time out, you know I went to this one myself. You know we got before one, uh, we got a point, couple of draws there, a two two and a one one. We've been thumb four nil there. We've been thumb, thumb five nil there. Albeit that you know there's a sending off, beat there two one. There's another draw after that that four one. You know, that, that's the run in the league. But, you know, we did go there in the Champions League in 2018 and what a night that was. That That's right up there, by the way. We did beat them at Wembley. And we and what that Wembley one, I think, you can never say something's a blueprint for something else because it's a different time and you know, different circumstances and different sides and all that. But that day, I don't know, we just fucking stepped out there like, we don't have to feel like we're inferior to these. Let's go and get at them, have a go at them. And, and we were well deserving of that win at Wembley. And, and I kind of want to see that type of performance. Yeah. You know, that 4-1 last season, shite. And it was like, there's nothing worse than going to a, a big game against, you know, I still don't like calling them a rival. We'll come on to this, but I still find them weird. But for the sake of the, of one, of the point of making, we'll call them a rival. There's nothing worse than going there and watching your side perform nowhere near to what they're able to do. Mm-hmm. And the amount of times we used to go to Old Trafford and do that was infuriating, do you know what I mean? And that, that, that very much now, I mean, I know their stars fell very much, but you know that feels like it's well off our back now. It's not a thing, is it? Mm. We've gone there and performed to amazing standards and beat them 5-0. Yeah. And I'm not saying we go there and do that at City because City are a great side with a great manager and all the rest of it. But I'd just like to go and see us perform to the level that we know they're, they're capable of, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I'd, I'd be surprised with the lads we've brought in and the lads that are already there. I'd be surprised if that's not their attitude going into it. I know. We want to show. Like, Sabozla is not going to be going to this game with anything no. other than, watch, I'll show you how fucking good I am. Who the fuck's Kevin De Bruyne and who the fuck's Rodri? Have I you don't seen care. his interviews where he's literally saying, like, you know, like, what, what's your aim? And he's, yeah, and he's like, win, win everything. everything. Yeah. And we already know that's what Salah's like. I've always yeah. I've always loved that about Salah. He just says it with it. Like, Sabozla said it and smiled. Salah always says it with a straight face. Like, are you going to be the best player in the world? And he's like, I am the best player in the world. Yeah. And it's like... Oh yeah, who's in, <laughs> who's in your fantasy footy team? Yeah. Me. Me. Who's yeah. your captain? Me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like, completely owns it. But doesn't I, it? I, and I've just always fucking loved that yeah, about him. And, and I, I just think there's a there is a thing about our squad now that that's there. Like we can't underestimate as well. The Diaz situation is resolved now. Yeah. His dad's back. Everything's safe. There'll be a massive that'll lift a massive weight off our squad. It will. Flown his family here, haven't they? Exactly. So there's all kinds of things in that. And so the only other, the bit I was going to say before the only other thing is that it's a big test for McAllister in the six, yeah. which assuming he will play there, which which I guess he will um, now that he's back. Um, but I I don't know I I just something tells me I think we can go there and win. I, I, as you and look the twelve thirty thing doesn't help, but I th- I I hope I would like Klopp to get away from this fucking moaning about the twelve thirty thing because it doesn't help us moaning about it doesn't help it gets in it's the place psyches either, is it? and. Joe, especially when you're playing a team like City, he's acknowledged himself. I get it. Like, it's ridiculous. But it's ridiculous it's, for both sides. Yeah, and it's the, poli- it's the police himself. this time as well. You know, this, this particular 12 to 80 is, is that what it to, is? Yeah. So, you know, lots of them have been TV. And, and, and I, I, when you're saying about him moaning about it, what I'd like to see done 
is it's taken up the chain, you know, like so Billy Hogan or whoever yeah. goes and yeah. sits on the Premier yeah. League board meetings, go and take that up the ladder and say, you sort on. it out. And, and, and present all the stuff that we keep saying on shows and mm. present all the stuff that Reds everywhere are saying, how come we get so many of them though? It's not fair. Yeah. It's not fair when our players are going to South America and coming back. You know you're going to see a substandard match to what it would have been like, like Henry said, if it had been the main one on Sunday yeah. or even the R5 on Saturday. And and I believe that's the slot. I, I, I think I'm right in saying that's the slot it was going to be. And the coppers complained saying it was a risk match. Uh, okay. And that's why it's gone to 12.30. Because uh, there, you know, there have been one or two incidents between fans. But, you know... Still not to the point where I, th I would personally think it, it, it's getting to the stage of it being a risk match. It's very much like a, a very small minority of people on both sides that have been belayed to the point that it would require their involvement, in my opinion. But it is what it is, and that's when the game's going to be, and there's nothing we can do about it now. Um, as you've already said there, mate, as well, you know, the, well, before that, I just wanted to mention some of the uh, sass that we got in the comments. So we were about two minutes late, I think, as we were just setting things up and getting things going. Um, got one comment there, not so live at five, it seems. <laughs> Fucking okay, hell. <laughs> I, I, just so you know, mate, I was floating the idea to start a half five today to, to help with our timing of the show. So it's a good job we didn't do that, isn't it? So superb, um, superb sass there. Like um, various people sort of slagging off the um, the international football that they've been forced to watch. Uh, LFC Adam pointing out that it's Brentford v Arsenal uh, in the R5 slot now. Um, yeah, I mean, just back to City, you know, there, there have been some cracks uh, visible in terms of what they've done this season, but they've all been away. Uh, and if you look at the home record, they've only played five at home in the league. Some teams have played seven, but it's five out of five for them at home. They scored 16 and they've conceded three. We've talked about our great record at home. You know, theirs is, e well, it's not equally impressive because they only played five and they haven't really played anyone of note yet. So that's interesting. And, and again, this is where you want Liverpool to go and lay a glove on them. Liverpool to go and sort of be the best Liverpool they can be. But equally, you know, if you're doing the Blue Moon 123 podcast, um, you're going to say, well, look at Liverpool's away form because that's where they, they've they slipped. You know, they've gone and drawn at Luton, drawn at Brighton, drawn at Chelsea, um, and then completely fucking had off at Spurs by the officials. No, I won't let it go. I'm going to say this every week, aren't <laughs> yeah, I? I'm um, so, yeah, it, it, Liverpool's away form is the seventh best in the league, albeit just grocked all over the mic, sorry, lads, um, albeit skewed by Spurs. So, you know, I guess if you're City, you're saying, well, you know, they're not, they're not that good away. They're not that formidable away. Yeah, but I don't think that, I think the, the, the fixture list has skewed that, hasn't it? Because, We'd all take a draw, probably, wouldn't we? Yeah. So and so our fixture, our away form looks poor because we've already been away to Brighton, we've already been away to Chelsea, and we've already been away to Spurs. Well, the Spurs, you know, cock up bullshit aside, we should have at least had three draws out of those games. We played well at Spurs. Um, yeah. So I think we'd have won that game if it wasn't for all that, even with ten men. But we should have beat Luton. Yeah. But well, and look, even but. Luton's the, Luton's the one outlier in that, I think, because we were just poor and we should have won, but we didn't. The other three, they're, the, they're three of your toughest away games of the season. And we got three, we effectively got three draws. All right, we lost, we we did officially lose one, but in weird circumstances. I, I'm not I'm not that fussed Newcastle about it. Newcastle was great as well. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? That yeah. was absolutely superb. Exactly. When you think what we did there. And I, just, I don't know. I, just, I think this is an outlier game as well. I've said in the past, and you, you pointed out to me last week, I think that you know, I said with the games against Man City, no no result would ever surprise me going into them. And then you pointed out our form's actually really shit, pretty shit there mm. away. But it's when you think, okay, well, we haven't won there since 2015. So what's that, eight years? But you basically... In said, the league, yeah. Yeah, in the league. Well, and that, even that, that's only in the league. We have won there since then. And we're talking about one of the best teams of all time. We've got a few draws there, like I said yeah. as well. So it's not, I don't think it's like a, an absolute disgrace that we haven't won there in the league since 2015. And we, and we haven't won in the in any competition since 2018. We're, Three th draws. They're an unbelievable side. So if we go there and get a draw, sound. 
it, but I, I think but it's just because we've been tonked, you know, being tonked a few times is why it's also here. That's the downside, isn't it? Isn't it? Four yeah. one last time, four nil in twenty twenty, and five nil in twenty seventeen. That's when Mane got sent off, isn't it? The five nil uh, stung because of the the Mane thing, didn't it? Um, we got we got um, we got someone in the comments there just saying, would you definitely play McAllister? You know, um, Argentina playing early hours Wednesday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's Colin Colin Rice. I'm not too sure, and I don't think anyone will be sure on a Monday uh, what the situation is regarding availability. Um, I'm, almost, I'm almost like loath to say it because I can't be bothered dealing with the comments. <laughs> the, the weird crew of people that don't like Curtis Jones, is there a possibly, possibility they could be pissed off and he could play because he hasn't been to the other side of the earth? Yeah, but, I, but like the, my thing is, he gets enough shit as it is, throwing him in as the six, even though I think he can play there. I like to. But to, to throw him in against City away is a bit of a fucking stretch, isn't it? I think I think it's. But, but you think it's about, too you think about like Wolves. That was twelve thirty, wasn't it? And that came after an international break, and McAllister was shit. And like like he but was goose, wasn't he? Was, wasn't yeah, he was blown goosed. for tugs. It looked like he'd been goosing. Had a pure Stefan Hensho face after yeah. about like five but he'd, minutes. But he'd been playing up in a mountain, hadn't he? With on oxygen and <laughs> yeah. all kinds. And you're like, you're like, Jürgen. Could, get, get and I remember, remember Jürgen afterwards was like, yeah, well, he had been on oxygen and that. And you're like, yeah, fucking hell, mate. That, that, that was a, there was a clue there, wasn't there? He might not be yeah. ready. I mean, there's the completely, you know, there's the, the there's the balls out option as well, isn't there? Of just playing like a comp- almost like a completely attacking midfield. You know, you got, you got Gravenberg knocking round as well. Um, etc. But I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how he sets up, won't it? I mean, we don't know. Um, I, I'd like to think, you know, they can pull something out of the bag again where we see a performance, but it being at 12 30, it being after a break, you know, that's going to affect them as well, to be fair, as well. I mean, yeah. I heard Noel Gallagher talking about City and about this game. And, you know, sometimes it can feel like it's always us who are moaning about this. So I was glad to hear a City fan say, it's shit that it's at half 12. He said the same thing. He said, you know, you're not going to get a game that would be as good as if it was, as he- go back to Henry's comment, R4. This is the thing I, I don't really understand about the Premier League. Like, because uh-huh. surely this is your, this is your pin up game. Yeah, yeah. This is your, you want everyone around the world to watch and you want it to be as good as possible. You want to make sure all the lads are as fit as possible for it. And they've got like, pre- Premier League with no skin in the game of who wins, arguably. Um, and it just Klopp made the point that like you know half of the lads playing in this game are going to be coming back on the same flight. They they, they get the same private plane. They've, the clubs have all done a deal now to to pick them up. So it's it's crazy that it's at half twelve on a Saturday for for all people involved. That everybody involved is ridiculous, including the Premier League. Someone's asked about Gravenberg um, saying isn't he meant to be injured? Uh, Klopp described that as a minor knee issue. Um, so. You, you know, you'd suspect that he's uh, he's likely to to be in contention. Um, well, and look, there's always there's always the you never know, do you? Like, there's always the potential for something to be thrown in that you're not expecting. Because Gomez and Canate were missing from um, from Brentford, weren't they? Yeah, but they were only um, minor, weren't they? Well, I mean, or again, that that's fair. Nothing's really being said on it. Mm. You know what I mean? So, so it, it's hard on a Monday to say with any certainty before Klopp's done his press conference, et cetera, how that will go. So we've got to talk to, for that reason, we've got to talk more more generally. And to come to a point that I sort of touched on before, I, I still can't take them seriously. I don't know what it, whether ever this is just me, but, you know, like, it's a huge game because this is a team that keeps winning the title. It's a huge game because it's a team that has pipped Liverpool to the title twice by a point. It's a huge game because they're just always up there and they're probably always going to be until, you know, the FFP um, wagon comes around to their front door. Like, But in terms of this rivalry and in terms of the stuff with the fans and all that, I just, I just can't buy into it. it, it it's, it's like, it's in my DNA. I went to Main Road and like, so I remember them from then. Mm-hmm. And I also remember them knocking around in playoff finals with Paul Dickoff scoring and all the rest of it. I can remember Jed Brannan, who's from my neck of the woods, playing for City. Well, it's mad. If you said Man City to me, if you go to me, Man City, name a player, do you like, 
like word association thing. The first play, got, even now, after King all this Kong. time, Richard Dunn. Richard Dunn. <laughs> I like, I always think King Kong, King Clancy. King Clancy, yeah. 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 Good, good player. I always wanted him he to was come boss. to the Reds. Like. He was boss. Uh, someone said Paul Lake there. Paul Lake, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> but, but how do you feel about it? I mean, like, you know, do, 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 you, do you feel like the way you do about Everton or Man United or whatever going into this game? No. Or do you just think... The- no, e- even before when you said it's been moved to half 12 because of the police, my whole system was like, what? Yeah. Why? What's the police got to do with it? Yeah, we're not asked. Like, no one cares, do you? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Because one knobhead threw a bottle at a bus once. Like, it's hardly a threat to public safety. Oh, we're just getting, lo- just getting loads of city players getting the comments now. Yeah. Colin Bell. Yeah. Um, Colin Bell. Do you remember Sean Gota. Do you remember they wanted to name the... Um, the Bell End. Yeah, the Bell <laughs> The bell end. Where are you today, lads? I'm in the bell, in the bell end. Um. <laughs> no, yeah. Look, mate, on, on that, no. And I, I'm not sure I ever will. I, I think it's all too forced and it's just don't really care about them. And even, even all this stuff with, you know, and you know what I'm like. We've talked about this so many times. I try and be balanced about all the charges and say, look, you can spend loads of money. You can cheat with money, but look at United. It doesn't, doesn't actually guarantee anything. Look at Everton that we talk about in detail on, on the show coming up on Wednesday you can spunk loads of money. The, the reality is they've still got a boss manager and they've still bought good players and they've still developed them really well. And even with all that, I'm just not asked. And I think yeah. and, and I think the reality is no one's that asked. Like they won a treble last year and no one's that asked. It just it just feels very plastic, doesn't it? That that, yeah. that that's what I mean. It feels like the bastard son of a football club that we want to yeah. do, you know, in in every respect. And and look, I might sound bitter, I'm not bothered. This is what I think and this no, is how I feel about no, it. Look, mate, I when they've I, been I remember under the ground, they've been under the set of owners. It, it, you know, some people might deem it like you've won the football lottery or whatever. I just don't get, I, I genuinely want to see a City fan like write something or say something on a podcast where they say, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel pure. It doesn't feel as good as the the days at Main Road because because you've cheated the fucking system. I don't think basically. they need to say that though. I think it, it's written all over their club. They don't, mean, you, their, you know, they don't sell out the home games for Champions League well, fixtures. And they've just announced revenues of 712.8 million. The first English club to break the 400 yeah. million pound barrier in wages for a single <laughs> season. Um, you know, and yeah, five title wins out of the last six, but 115 no, but even charges. When they, we, I think we mentioned this last week. Even when, they met, even when that was on the, the list, you were like the rich list. The, the, oh, Man City at the top of the rich list now. Of course they are. Biggest club in the world now. Of course they are. Even City fans I mean, must go. On. Oh, fucking bullshit. No, Just come on. Bullshit. It's not. Um, but, but look, on that point, I remember when Man United won the treble and I was in town and we, was, we were in a bar. We were in the 147. Remember the 147? Yeah, we were in there and it, they had it on and we were just there to basically, hopefully watching Bayern Munich beat them, obviously. As soon as they scored that winning goal and the full-time whistle went, I remember me and my mates turned to the bar staff and saying to them, turn this off. And they were like, we can't. There's like, there were United fans in there, must have been students or something. Can't. We had turn it off. We're not fucking watching this. And they were like, you will just have to leave then. And we left. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asked about City. I couldn't care less that they won the treble. It just passes you by, doesn't yeah, it? I'm like that. Like I, I can remember the same game um, being in my local in Iton and, Bizarrely, like there was, there was a couple in there. Um, because I mean, take a wild guess at the type of stuff me and my mates were saying at the fucking screen. I'm not gonna say it on here, but um, this I remember this woman turning to us and saying, like, why, why, why do you want Bayern Munich to win? I was like, you're not laugh. Was she doing that? You should just be supporting the English team. That, thing. Was, that was exactly what she said, and I went, they're not English, they're Manx. <laughs> What a line. <laughs> and I don't want them to win. Yeah. Why would I want them to win? Uh, I and then in fairness, it, it, that conversation would have been going on the other way around if we were in that situation. Yeah. And you'd have had a man saying, they're not English, they're scouts. But the city thing's just bo- like kind of boring, really. Isn't no it? It, it, it's just robotic. It's just like, yeah. Anyway, we'll move on from them. Um, people are still throwing in, um, <laughs> people are still throwing in names. Keith Curl, Robbie <laughs> Fowler, Kit Simons, Gary Flickcroft. Franny Lee, Dennis Law. Um, we wanted to talk about some of the stuff that I've seen and heard going on and also to talk a little bit about so just being a red as well. So, but first of all, um, a bit of heat for a post by LFC History. Uh, great set of lads, great website. Anyone that creates content about Liverpool 
will absolutely love uh, Arnie and the boys there doing it, uh, doing as a great service. It is a great resource for anything you want to know about the Reds. But he threw a tweet up um, which said, why have Copites almost completely stopped bringing the scarves to the game recently? The ground should be full of club colours, not wearing a scarf or a Liverpool shirt. Doesn't make anyone less cool. While it could help bring in, it could help bring in the legendary atmosphere back to Anfield. Uh, I do possess a scarf, um, and I do wear it as well. You know, like when the weather calls upon it. Basically, um, I, I don't not take me. I can only speak for myself. I don't not take me scarf because of, or do take me scarf because of what anyone else is doing. I can give a flying fuck, um, to be honest with you. I say, if I've got it with me and I've took it, I'll get it out and I'll do the You'll Never Walk Alone. I'll do the LA and spin it around my head and all that. Quite happy to do all of those things. Just like it, if it's warm now when I know I'm going for a pint, I just know it's going to be a bit of a pain in the arse and get in the way, so I sometimes don't take it. Yeah. I think there's a few things here. This we, We've talked about atmosphere before on this show, haven't we? And we talked about how... You, you just can't expect it to be rabid, like, th- you know, 19 times in, in the league or whatever and in mm. the cup. It's just, it's it, never ne- has been. it never has been and it never will be. And I also think, you know, I like it when, like, you know, the spying cop lads or whatever will, say, will, will, will push it and say, like, right, we're going to have a flag day. We're going to get behind the boys, you know, bring your colour, bring your noise, bring your flags. And we make an effort over, mm. you know, a, a fixture that requires it. Mm. But you just can't call for that when it's like Brentford or something. Do you know it what just I mean? Doesn't work, it, does it? it doesn't happen. And I, and I think there is, I think there is an argument to say there is less colour on there. I think that is a thing. I is, mean, it? is it? But I'm just thinking, isn't it just the time of the? Because what you just said, Ben, you're not going to take your scarf when it's hot. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know, but equally, like, it's starting to get cold, so there's no excuse now. So, so, you know, you can take them along. But also as well, just this thing as well, isn't there? I, I think it's getting a little bit more tiresome generally now, especially with us being more on top of each other, if you like. Like, we've just done a show where we're talking about social media. Like, there's a continual chatter about the Reds, mm. if you want there to be, 24-7, if you want it to be. Mm. And so we're continually on top of each other. We're continually talking about things. And sometimes it can feel, to me overbearing about like supposed rules or whatever and it's like i think some people rile against things when they see it as i'm being told to do something so like if you you know these are great lads don't i'm not having a go at them at all but if you start saying like should be doing this should be doing that you, you're gonna get people say fuck off don't tell me what to do yeah and, and and you know like there was a lot of comeback on this tweet about sort of like it doesn't really matter what outfits what clothing people are wearing at the end of the day does it like we can still get behind the side we can still make a noise and all that i just think like the atmosphere is the atmosphere and you know for me it's been all right i don't see there being a great problem with it this season so far and i think it's a bit weird that we've got a stand sitting there empty for home games at the moment i think that's just that odd. must have an impact i haven't well yeah. I, haven't, I haven't asked you about that because i haven't been it's just odd is it just weird does it feel weird yeah because, you know, I'm in the cop and I'm looking at it. And, and, yeah. and, you know, obviously you've got the away fans and you've got some of our fans and then you've got this huge expanse now filled with the seats, to be fair. And you can't help but look at it and think, that'll be boss that when it's full of fans. And, you know, you think about when um, they, opened, they opened the main stand and we played Leicester and, you know, there was definitely a ramp up in atmosphere, volume and everything else. I think there will be when that stand opens, inevitably. Yeah. But equally, while it's there and it's just sort of looking at you during games, I don't know, it's just a bit odd. Yeah, well, I think that surely subconsciously, like consciously, you know, that stands half empty because of construction issues. But subconsciously, your system's like, there's an half empty stand there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you go, whenever we've been to a game, and this has something happened for a long time in our life, but when we were younger, it would. When you go to a game and the ground's half empty, it has an impact on you because it's like, oh, this game, this game can't be as important. Do you know what I mean? Just I like, subconsciously. I, I like this as well from uh, Andrew. I mean, you know, I, I think people can just be honest about these things, can't they? And, you know, he's just said there, I think the atmosphere is a reaction to what's happening on the pitch and we aren't as rock and roll in how we play now. We, you know, we're a bit more slow build up. I think that's true. That's right. I, I think there's a and, lot of like look, control in football. Isn't and in there, fairness to Man City, going back to them, I think that's part of their, their issue. crowd. Yeah. 
Like they play a very controlled, boring type of footy most of the time. Andrew's also said it's being too warm for him. There for you the, go for the scarves. Yeah, um, we've also uh, we've also had the comments. <laughs> should wear a red romper suit. I, I I've I've actually got. I'd pay. I've can got. Can we a, do it? Can we do something? Can we do it? Like go fund me for Robbo to wear a red romper suit to the you game. Can fuck right off. <laughs> Um, you can put, you can put whatever you want out there. It's not happening. But I have got a picture saved on my laptop because I couldn't believe it when I saw it. And I, I just like, you know, we talked before on our so- show where we were talking about social media. About I still find myself occasionally wrapped up in mad arguments online. Sometimes I try not to. I can't be arsed really, to be honest. But sometimes you just do. And sometimes you get them mad ones where scousers this, scousers that, Liverpool fans this, Liverpool fans that. And you just need something in your locker to throw back every now and again. And I've got a picture of a grown man in a red romper suit with a Man United badge stood outside Old Trafford on match day. Have you seen it? I feel like I have. Do you want something inside just says, I've seen that picture. Yeah. And I've just got it saved there just to you go. just keep it? Yeah, just to like, I don't know. There'll be a Just throw it out every yeah, now and yeah, then. Yeah. What are you on about? Seeing that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bell ends. Um, okay. Well, 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 that, that's the scarves thing and that's the atmosphere thing. Um, we just done, as we keep mentioning, a full show on the situation at Everton. Um, and it got us thinking about being a red and, you know, it, it hasn't been bad, has it? You know, our lives being uh, Liverpool fans. You might be wondering why Kopi's sat here with two uh, large bits <laughs> sheet, of red sheet. red fabric. <laughs> it looks like I'm just sitting in the bed and brought say, it in. Yeah. <laughs> I meant to say to Dylan before, what does it look like me sitting here between just, these? Like, just on the way to the lawn dress. explain what it is. Because yeah. I've done a spud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Train spot and reference for those that didn't get it. Um, no, the, these are a couple, couple of flags that Kopi uh, has made. One of them in particular, I think uh, you will recognise. Um, we're not quite sure how we're going to make this work. I mean, we're conscious that somebody has listened to this uh, after the event as a podcast it's not it's not really going to work as a, as a podcast event i don't think so go over to youtube and watch it if you want to know what it says on the flag or you want to see it uh, and also while you're there click like and subscribe because eh, that helps us and all usually we're on like right now do that as well please because um it helps the channel it helps the algorithm and it make, means more people watch and it means we might be able to you know this this whole thing might survive and we can keep it going but in terms of um just sort of you know it's been boss to be a red I wrote something for Love, Follow, Conquer last week, mm. my, my, my weekly blog for them. Um, and some of the stats and facts that I was unearthing. Because if you remember when we did this last week, we were talking about home form. And I said, well, the last time we lost to anyone at home is Real Madrid in February. And I was like, you know, that's not bad, is it? And then I was like, you know, since then, we were eight unbeaten at home last season and nine Anfield wins on the spin this season. Mm. Each of those by two goals or more. First time that's happened since 1980. All of those things. 17 unbeaten then at Anfield. And I found myself saying about that, it's not bad, is it? And then I'm like, not bad. It's pretty, pretty fucking good, really, isn't yeah. it? Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then I started thinking, well, hang on. How, you know, how good are we at home? Like, it, it feels like it could be mad stats. And I started looking into it. And it is mad stats. Um, and you think all the way back to when Brendan Rodgers was succeeded by Jurgen Klopp. So Liverpool had lost 3 0 at home to West Ham that season. That was the first time they'd come to Anfield and won since 1963. Now, Rodgers said after that game, I think it would be a really difficult league to get your home wins in. It's, it's not great that for a Liverpool manager, is it? Um, it was also, that defeat was the 11th at home in the league in little over three years under Rodgers. We get Klopp in. He gets beat. We get beat 2-1 by Crystal Palace. He has that rant about fans getting off early and all that kind of stuff. And he says, you know, between 82 and 94 minutes, you can make eight goals if you like. So Rodgers' final full season, just putting things into context here. Um, the Reds lost to Aston Villa, Chelsea, Man United and Crystal Palace. Real Madrid, obviously, in the league as well, in the Champions League in the group stages with ease, that embarrassing game where there were, it almost felt like loads of our fans were taking pictures of them and it was like, yeah, lads, there's a bit of red carpet. Yeah. It was just very, very, like very un-Liverpool. Then Klopp comes in and he says, to be successful, you have to have a fortress at home. And that's what we've got. 
And, 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 you know, we've got those six home defeats in COVID. Just forget that. That's a different sport. That's not Liverpool. That wasn't Anfield. So Burnley, Brighton, City, Everton, Chelsea, Fulham came and won on an empty ground. Okay, well, there was nothing we could do about that, was there? I'm saying in this piece of road, forget that shite. We should hail and hero worship the period that preceded it when after a defeat to Crystal Palace in April 2017, Liverpool went unbeaten in the Premier League at Anfield for 68 games, 55 wins, 13 draws. And that was the best since under Rafa Benitez when we, when we reached 30 league games unbeaten. So it's more than double. Uh, that was between 07 and 09. We've been at it again since then. So since defeat to Fulham in 2021, in that sort of twilight zone period of life, we've only been beaten once in the league at Anfield in 48 games. That was that was Leeds United last season. And that's the only Premier League match Liverpool have lost in front of supporters in the league since 2017. Six years. So for six years, we've been going to Anfield in the league and watching our side not get beat and mainly win. And like, I, I just think like, you know, like that stuff that we like, stuff like people are talking about, like Shankly and Paisley and Fortress Anfield associating it with that. Mm. We've got a fortress here and now on its boss. And it's like, you know, my, my, my sort of, my piece headline was like, this is a golden time to be going to Anfield. Like, does it feel like that though in it when in the conversations you see or hear about Liverpool? I no, and I think it's I think this ties into a deeper thing, right? A society thing now. Like the what's just, what we've become in society. I was watching a um neuroscientist talk about this the other day, about how we you know everything gets normalized very quickly. It's talking about like um when you go on holiday, when they study people who go on holiday, when they asked you know, they come back and they do the survey, and it was like their favorite. Their favourite moments were always the firsts. So the first cocktail, the first time they saw the beach, the first meal, because it quickly becomes normalised. And it's just like, yeah. within a week, it's like, just another fucking cocktail. And you're like, fucking hell, what have we done to ourselves in this yeah. society? And I think that that comes through in this, is that we do. And people like you and me have over the years. I remember like in, in the last incarnation of this side being amazing, saying to people, like, soak this in. Like, these are... You know, that that line, these are the good old days. We are living in the good old days now. Yeah, we're gonna, we're now. all going to look back at this it's at some point now. when this cycle is finished, which it inevitably will at some point for everyone. Like, again, we're, we're reveling in it happening to Man United. It will happen again to us. It will happen to Man City. It, we have the, I think it. you have that feeling that it will just, everything goes on forever. It, and it, it always feels like that. But look at Barcelona. Barcelona under Guardiola, like that side, when Barcelona were that Barcelona, I think everyone just thought these are just going to win everything forever. And then what happened? The cycle ended and they fell apart and all of a sudden they were shit. That will happen again at some point. And at some point we're going to be looking at each other going, fucking hell, we should have made more of like, we should have celebrated but he's more when we were boss. And, and he's added to that record though well, as well, well so we, far. And so we good. talked about this, we did talk about this maybe last season of, how difficult that is to do. I remember like referencing a few other managers of other sides and how, who's ever done this really. And look, we haven't won anything yet, but the signs are good. He's continuing that record with these new lads and with with version 2.0. But it, it is hard, isn't it? Because when you are living in it and it just goes on, you just forget what it's like to get beat. I know. Forget about Hodgson and Soonis yeah. and Hicks and Gillette and yeah. all the shite. But um, look, mate, I, rem I do remember this happening with with Benitez. I remember, I remember we drew one one at home to Leon in the Champions League. I often reference this when this topic comes up, and the and a section of the of the crowd booed because we'd drawn at home with the champions of France, and I was like, "Fucking hell! Look at where he's raised his own bar that yeah. he's now getting measured against. That that's not good enough." And like before him, what were we fucking doing? And sadly for Klopp, th this is just part of what happens in life, isn't it? And it is part of what happens in this country as well. Dave uh, Dave Seeger, who writes for Opta these days, uh, once upon a time did stuff for the Amphir app. Um, he, 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 he had a stat about this that says, if you only include games in which fans have been present at Anfield, 
Liverpool's record since that loss to Crystal Palace is played 103, won 82, drawn 20, lost one. That's wild, isn't it? That is wild. That's a fucking fortress. You know, fortress Anfield is not a cliche. That is what we've got. And, and in terms of just sort of like what we've seen as well, like, you know, I've been knocking around since 1976. I'm the artist uh, out of me and you. Obviously, I don't remember 1976. Like, um, but, but, you know, we've basically seen the lot. You know, as the song goes, you won the fucking lot. Um, the league, okay, you would say, we still need to do it in front of fans. I still take his fucking win in it all day. Do you know what I mean? And no one saw a pandemic coming. Do you know what I mean? Um, in the Everton show, I did like a bit of a sort of 30 year record really to emphasize where they've been. Um, obviously the highest they've ever finished is fourth in the, in the Premier League era. Um, with Liverpool, I thought I'd start from, well, okay, when I'm when am I sentient from if you like what what can I sort of remember? I've decided round about five going to school and, and and you know being around other people I'm I'm saying from then I probably would have known a bit what was going on mm-hmm. and that's it so so I'm taking it from when I was five this is what Liverpool have won in my lifetime seven league titles four European cups a UEFA cup if you want to count the Super Cup three of them. Uh, the Club World Cup in Qatar went to that one. Um, six FA Cups and nine League Cups. I mean, it's all right, isn't it? It's all right, isn't it, being a red, if you've got all that's going on in your lifetime. I've done the Premier League era thing as well, like I did for Everton, to see you know where we finished in the last sort of 30 or, or so years. So obviously first once, second five times, third six times, fourth seven times, fifth three times, sixth three times, seventh three times, and eighth, which is the worst we've done in those 30 odd years, uh, three times. Well, and even that, like the, the worst we finished is eighth. I, and think about that. And I've often said this, do I reference me mate who's a Chef United fan and always say to you, go and get a mate who supports another club outside of Everton because you know that's a different story so for the lowest you've finished in 30 years basically your adult adult years supporting Liverpool being eighth and that's happened three times you've won the league you've won all those things you've mentioned any one of those things to my mate who's a Sheffield United fan or the vast majority yeah. of football supporters in the country any one of those things would be the best thing that ever happened to them watching their club I mean, wasn't and it? We had all of them because it was great, wasn't it? When you know Wigan won the FA Cup, and like they still went, they went down, didn't they? The the same season, but I remember thinking, you know what, you'd fucking take Fuck that, it, take it, you'd take that one. Yeah, but I remember, but think Dave Whelan, the owner. Yeah, he was like, "Sound, we won the FA Cup." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, I who cares? Like, you know, someone somewhere will say it's devalued and it isn't what it once was, and all that. Fuck all that. But Beats that ties it. into look. That it does tie into go and go and check out our, our show on Wednesday. The, our TLC show, the main TLC show, because that ties into that, doesn't it? Too much of the talk around footy has it's it, every loads of people have been skewed by this. You're better off finishing fourth. No, you're not. Why? It's just that's just an accountancy thing. I know. We're not. This isn't elite. We're, we're not competing on who's got the best accountants. We're not competing on who's got the best amortization. We're not competing on who's got the I best know. lawyers. Why we're do we even know these words? Got, exactly. Where did where did we? How did we arrive at a place where we're talking about shit like that? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It, we it, care about. We care about. We're meant days to be that. Li- we're meant to be the stuff. little kid that wore the Umbro Liverpool kit and just loved footy. That's a good loved point, actually, mate. That's a good Kenny point. Our, our little kids walking around now going, yeah. Well, our lawyers are better than your lawyers. Yeah, we got away with FFP. Like, fucking no, wild. it's about fucking Luis Diaz and Mo Salah. And you've, I mean, you've, you've even listed that. That's something over the years I've gone fucking hell. Like, and again, we did, a, a, we talked a lot about Everton on the, on the show that's come out on Wednesday. You think about the money they've spunked and the players they've had. That must piss them off. Because we, it's like, just a fucking stream of the greatest strikers you've ever seen in your life have gone th- th- gone through Liverpool. And everyone else must think, I th- often think this, well, surely we won't find another one. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. you think, Mo-, Mo Salah will leave and we won't find another one. But we will. Because look at that list. Owen Fowler, Gerard, Torres, Suarez, 
this was just, I, I literally wrote this agenda before and like, you know, I, I throw stuff into a, li a little file or, you know, as the days are getting closer to us doing a podcast. And I literally wrote this sentence and I just put Owen Fowler, Gerard Torres, Alonso Suarez, Alison Van Dyke, just spitballing. But you could make as long a list of shit players for some clubs as we can make for good ones for ours. But and not even good ones, mate. And Look it's at like, that. They well, are great ones. They are great. great. A, they are legends loads, there's of the loads game. I've missed off. That's just like literally, I'm, I'm typing like that. Prepping for the prepping for the show, and that was just like what what came to my mind in a, in yeah, a split second, 100%. without even thinking about yeah. it. And imagine, right, just even just to even do like we don't even need to go back, need to go back to Rush and Dalglish and Keegan. Exactly, yeah. Right, you go when we had Torres and we lost him. Our gen, our age group of fans was like, are oh, really upset. How are we going to replace Torres? We got Luis Suarez. I, I still think Luis Suarez is the greatest player I've seen in in the flesh. Right, I. I I never, I've never seen Messi play to his level because when, whenever I saw him in the flesh, he was playing us and we were pretty good when we played him. Same with Ronaldo. Suarez was unbelievable. We lost Suarez. Now we've got this lad from Egypt who every fucking week breaks another record. It's like he breaks records you didn't even know existed. Oh, yeah. He's just strolling through life going, with people going, he's not that good, by the way. Fucking hell, does that not show? If there's everything that shows how spoiled we are, is that there are some Liverpool fans who think Mo Salah's not that good. You're like, well, okay. There are some Liverpool fans as well. Who'll, who'll, like someone thrown in before saying, you know, the only th the only reason it perhaps doesn't feel as golden as it should is that there aren't more titles. I see that a lot. And it's like, well, that's that to me now and the way I think now is that's back to that thing of there's only so much you can control though, isn't there? And so Liverpool can have a great side, which we have done and which we do have. You think about the side that was denied the title twice by a point, by a team that is like hiring these lawyers, circumnavigating the rules, spending money, owned by a country, a bottomless pit. They beat us by a point. I, you, you can't have a go at Liverpool for not winning that, surely. But people do. People say, no, no, you should have spent more on this, should have done this, FSG this, FSG that. I don't get it, mate. We had a great side, and we, if you're getting 90-odd points, you're unlucky. Well, we got the highest points tally in history, aside from the side that beat us. Well, I can remember when yeah, we were like, talking well, about 80-odd points and saying we'd done well. 86 points, or we'd done well. well Man, yeah. United, Man United under Ferguson, I don't think, ever got above 86, did they? Not sure. Something, and that just, obviously, people will tell me if I'm wrong about that, but it... Or maybe maybe low nineties. They never they never I hit the they heights. Won it. They won it with seventy odd one year. Yeah, I know that. exactly. And, and so Leicester, did Leicester. Leicester yeah. won it with seventy seven, I think. Ended no, up with about eighty two so, by the end so, of the season. Not but, win. but they were crown champions with seventy yeah. odd. Yeah. To, to not win the league with 97, 98 points is absolutely ridiculous. Um, we want to do... Oh, we're running out of time here. I mean, we're going to talk about that... Even, I was going to say that even the grim times, you know, we ended up with positives and sources of pride, like getting rid of Hicks and Gillette, mobilising as a fan base. And that sort of brings us to, you know... The, the fan base, I love I love the fan base that we've got. I love the fan culture that we've got. Mm. I love the fact that, you know, I was part of a podcast and, you know, people listened to it, watched it, built it up into something mad. You know what I mean? I, I genuinely believe there's not that many clubs where you could do something like that. Yeah. That, like, you know, how fervent we are about our support. And I know, like, there'll be someone somewhere, Scouse exceptionalism. Fuck off. Like, stop thinking of terms to say why supporting our club's a bad thing. And, you know, what part of the culture and part of the support is flags. And I just wouldn't... I, when we were prepping for this, I just wondered if everyone, everyone knows out there who watches and listens that Mr. Paul Cope is responsible for a very famous flag. Now, how are we going to do this? Are we just going to step back and unveil it behind us? Do you want to? And, People and are... hope that we don't knock loads of things over well, there. And do you know what? Dylan, you, Dylan is watching in the gonna, background. You're going to get a surprise how, how big this is. Hey, that's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's what she that's said. That's what she said. <laughs> so so this, this might not really work as a podcast bit, but like I say, if you want to see what's going on, well, come and have a look. I mean, I don't even know what it's going to look like on camera because we're on a set. And do you know what? It hasn't. I haven't actually unrolled. I got I, this was in my mum and dad's loft. It hasn't been out the bag for years, so it's it's obviously a bit tatty. But look, at, yeah, I'll, I'll show you a little thing. Should I get one end? Ooh. See if you can. Uh, does it? I'll show this to the camera while because in case we can't see that. See what that is. Sand. Who's who's? 
Oh, is that Benitez? Mr. Benitez signed yes. it. Yes. Yeah. It's got it's got Istanbul dirt on it. So, so does anyone know what it like I, I reckon someone somewhere will know what it is. Yeah, throw you in know, the comment. I some people some someone people in, do no know. one in the comments has yet commented knowing what this is gonna be. Um so He's yeah. Upside down. So yeah, it's it's great, it's great audio, this great isn't audio. it? <laughs> great. Well, it's not even great <laughs> visual right now, is it? <laughs> Uh, someone, someone thought you brought your bed sheets before and asked if you were taking the match. Like, um, so do you want to sign up? Let's have a go. Let's just do it. I might be able to stand up with the mics. I mean, look, if you're watching, you, you get to see our other parts of our body. Yeah. That side is you, I think. Right, yeah. Bloody hell, lad, it's massive. Exactly. <laughs> So I, the reason this is so big, I made it. How are we looking, Dylan? Is it kind of in yeah, shot? Yeah, you're kind of getting it. If you get Paul, if you step back. Paul, step back. Yeah. Get more of it. In. Get more of it in. Oh, come on, we need to pull it tight. Oh, I'm gonna knock the, I'm gonna knock the black wall over. <laughs> Massive, innit? So can you sort? I must be off camera by now. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think we are. So that's the best what we're going to get, isn't it? Let's let let's go back and talk about it. So, um, <laughs> so I don't know whether that really worked, but I thought it'd be boss because I love that flag myself. It is. Um, if you didn't know what it was, well, you say, mate, your flag. Go on. Yeah. So it's. Um, well, it. I'm wrecking the set here. <laughs> Shots, lads. Um, like yeah, the who doing a podcast. What's funny? <laughs> did, so did you know that banner? Because we didn't know each other back then, did we? No, I remember it well, yeah. Yeah. I remember um, I, I remember. I, I'm pretty sure I saw it, it was, you know, before Istanbul in the square. So it was in Taxim Square, Taxim on, the, Square on the side yeah. of a bar. You can So you can actually find it online. If you search it online, you'll find it. There's a picture of it on the side of the bar where we put it up. Um, Super Croat Igor Biscan used to be atrocious. Tremendous. Um, and it was one of our a, a mutual mates who has done the rap, Paul Johnson. We, I was playing five side with him at the time and it, it came through him. Like a lad said, to, I don't even know who came up with it. He said to me before, uh, he began to ask, some lad said to me the other day, this would be a good banner, wouldn't it? And said that. Said that. And I said, well, is he going? Is he going to do it? And he said, no. And we'll check with him for me because I'll make it. And I remember staying in me, I was in my dad's garage, bought that big sheet, but I did it in sections and I just hadn't thought it through because because obviously you couldn't build that in one go in a what, in a garage with a normal size house. So I did it in sections. <laughs> so I didn't know how big it was until I unveiled it. And I remember my mate coming around we were going to, I was going to Istanbul with and he was like, fucking hell, yeah, mate. <laughs> Fucking massive. What does the other one say? Because that is that well, Athens. This is from Athens, right? But it, it says all things are possible for those who believe. And it's funny because it is. I said to you in messages, like, no one knows this one because it was yeah. from a final we lost. But when you, you know, like that's proper, like looks amateur and all that, doesn't it? This one, it's like, I said, it's like the, the second album. Do you know, I, had the, I had the great first debut album that was all rough and ready fucking. And then the, the second album was all like polished and I'd made it really nice. And it's got like, look at, look at the flame on that. Oh, lovely. Like, handmade flame Tremendous. there. So but, you, um, you did that? I made them both, yeah. You you like, you like did all the sewing and everything? Like, yeah, yeah. Can I? Cause, so I did the sewing. you had that in your locker. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> the first one I did with um, Joe, that Wonderweb stuff that you'd like iron on. Oh, yeah. And all that. But then it comes off and then... But obviously no one gives a shit about your second one because it was shit compared to the first one and we got beat and all that. I only did one. I and mentioned it to down. you before. I'm not throwing up a picture of it. Oh, uh, I just think you case. should. I think you um, should. I mean, people might do it. Some people might remember who were, who were uh, watching or listening, but um, my missus at the time, because uh, I'm I'm very much, someone's not in my locker like at all. Um, barely thread a needle me. like. <laughs> um but I had the idea. I want we were going to Rome, and I wanted to do um, something like a nod towards you know Sunus in Rome and all that kind of stuff. And, and and you know I thought it was being clever with my you know headline writing type of thing. I wanted Rome, sweet Rome. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. So I had Rome, sweet Rome, uh, big live a bit. That bit was all sound, but then I, I wanted like Sunus with the with the European Cup. And I explained explained all this to Kelly at the time, and um, she was like, "Yeah, I can do all this. I'll do this. Yeah, sound and all that." So she basically like made this like um, <laughs> made a soonest, and it's not like you know a lot of people like just pay companies and things like that, don't they? This was very much more DIY, and and the, 
The live bird, I think, on its boss. The Rome Street Rome bit boss. The soonest, I was never sure. I was like, oh, Kel, I think we should just leave the soonest. I'm not sure about the soonest. And she was like, no, he's cute. Leave him, he's sound. <laughs> People are liking it, sound. No worries and all that. So took this this flag to Rome. And um, the Echo collared us in, in Speak Airport and like took a picture of me and Neil holding it and threw it on like an article. And so next minute, it's sort of like, it's out there, do you know what I mean? And it, it, it started like, it started like getting shared on Twitter. And it basically went viral. People like ripping the soonest. And, and like... <laughs> You're going to so, have to share a picture I mean, of so, it now. So, some of the pictures, some of the things that people did with the soonest head on the, on the flag were hilarious. Like I remember there was the Reebok advert from years back where everyone was doing like the calm down with the muzzy and the tap. And you know, everyone had like soonest off my flag's head in on the car. There was soonest, you know, when he planted the flag oh, yeah. in the middle of the pitch. Someone but, put it on that. But with the head off That's my flag. And, and you know, there was just loads of them. And it, it seemed to like go on for days. And I was like, Oh, I can't believe I've took a flag to all the way to Rome and it's gone viral for basically being shit. But but Kelly just wasn't bothered. I love that. She was just like, you know what, sound if everyone's had a laugh from it, so what? Like I yeah. she's like, I still think he's cute. I still like my soon. It's yeah. like, do you know what I mean? So yeah, that and was... it is boss, isn't it? Like it is funny that like yeah, everyone yeah. got a laugh out of it. I mean that. So I've still I've still got it. Like I mean maybe we should bring it in one week and, and we can buzz off the students all over again. But I I just love the way she was an ass. That do you know what I mean? I mean if, if I had spent all the time and effort she had in in actually making it, I think I would have been like oh fucking hell. Oh we are. He's got it here. Yeah. She found it. He, he's he's throwing it up on the screen. Um, I, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, so there, there it is. Uh, for those who are watching as a video, you might just about to be able to it's see amazing, it. It's amazing, man. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, there is a young me and Neil Atkinson holding it. Uh, and yeah, like it's I said, an image of Sunas. I, I think we should. I think we should send it to Sunas <laughs> and see to him what you think of this, mate. Uh, we may be seeing it. I mean, the funny thing about it as well was like, you know, people have been going on about it all the way through the trip, and then when you actually got to the ground, they were checking them flags to see what were on them you know like for political statements or whatever and like the the fella who checked it was like here oh yeah 1984 and i went yeah 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 and like he never said shit soon <laughs> you got it do you know what i mean um okay uh well we'll have to wrap up won't we we've gone slightly over time here five past six now uh so thanks for tuning in uh thanks for watching live at five hope you enjoyed it uh thanks for the comments uh thanks for the tweets in advance of the show as well um loads of good feedback there about the flags which is which is nice someone said there uh, someone saying there that soon just looks more like Lauro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's one of the kind of comments uh, I've, I've seen about yeah, it over take the that. years. Well, yeah, yeah take, take that, that all day. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Do uh, like and subscribe on the channel, please, because that helps us loads um, in terms of algorithm and getting it, this whole thing in front of people's faces. Uh, we are trying to make it all work. We are trying to keep it all going. Uh, the best way you can do that as well is, is of course, uh, jump on our Patreon, where we do an extra show every week. There's also something like Twitter, 29 30 shows there now in an archive as well you get access to that as a subscriber as well so i'm sure there'll be something in there that can entertain you and subscriber shows are now in the studio so two of them have been in the studio now after previously uh being from our living rooms uh, so check all that out come back monday next week as well tell your mates and if you've joined late and you want to sort of you, you're wondering what what this is all about it will be out later as a podcast if you want to listen to it that way and you can just restart this it lives on it will stay on our youtube channel so you can watch it from the start as well uh, thanks very much let's hope we do something at the weekend and don't forget if you've got a spare for man city give me a shout <laughs> up the lads <laughs>